and welcome back to Supercar Ranch. Today is an interesting day, and that is because Ford finally released some of the specs for the GT500 that's coming out. And although we don't have any real cars to race, we're going to do a little bit of internet car keyboard racing. But now we get to do it with the Hellcat Red Eye, the ZL1, and the GT500 all at the same time, and we're going to do it right now. <laughs> And today is a great day because we got to see a little bit more about what the GT500 will be that's coming out, how it compares against the GT350, how it compares against the Ford GT, and of course, most importantly, how it compares against the Hellcat Red Eye and the Camaro ZL1. Real quick, before I forget, also to all you new guys out there, I am running a promotion right now giving away free heel tread socks in the Gulf Colors. When I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to pick one random person that made a comment on any one of my videos during 2019. Mm. So all you got to do is help me get to 1,000 subscribers by hitting the subscribe button and then make a comment. Put a comment on this video, any other video I've got, and I will search all the comments made during the year 2019 and I will pick a winner once I hit 1,000 subscribers. Definitely the most intriguing spec that we learned today was that it's going to have 760 horsepower. It's also going to have 625 pound-feet of torque. Now, the 760 horsepower sounds amazing, uh, but it's actually less than the Hellcat Red Eye. But I think that's okay, and I think Ford did that on purpose. If you remember when the Hellcat first came out a couple years ago, it had 707 horsepower, and it blew everyone's mind. Well, the Hellcat Red Eye is just an upgraded version of the same car, and it has 797 horsepower. I'm pretty sure Ford put the GT500 right in the middle at 760 because they probably want to also offer some sort of a future upgrade, whether it be a factory installed upgrade or an aftermarket upgrade offered by Ford Performance that might get it over the 800 mark, which is currently what the benchmark is that was set by the Hellcat Red Eye. Also, the Camaro ZL1 has only 650 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. So clearly it's bringing up the rear, but there is something interesting about the ZL1. So the ZL1 has 650 pound-feet of torque. The Hellcat Red Eye has 707. The new GT500 only has 625. Now that doesn't mean that the GT500 is inferior to the ZL1 in any way, but it is interesting that it only has 625 horsepower compared to the 650 in the ZL1. One interesting thing to note that we do know about these cars is also that the T500 should have superior brakes. And I think what that really is, it's just a statement that Ford can make, is that this GT500 is more of a fully rounded sports car, not just a go in a straight line car like the Hellcat sort of is. Now, some of you guys might already be out there wondering, why am I not comparing this against the Demon? Well, the Demon, I know it has over 800 horsepower and it goes faster than any of these cars we talked about in a straight line, but that's about all it does. It's a one trick pony. Whereas these other cars, the Hellcat Red Eye, the ZL1, and the GT500 are more fully rounded. Uh, I think the GT500 is the most fully rounded of the three. The Hellcat Red Eye is still sort of a straight line car. What's also interesting is the top speed of these cars. Uh, the GT500 is apparently limited at only 180 miles an hour, whereas the ZL1 can do 190 and the Hellcat can get over 200 miles an hour. So that's an interesting spec that came out that is actually bringing up the rear of the three cars. Interesting in comparison is the transmissions. It's got a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. It's actually the same transmission, I believe, that's in the 4GT that I have. Uh, what is interesting about this comparison is that the Hellcat Red Eye actually only comes with an eight-speed automatic transmission does not have a manual option or a dual clutch transmission option. Whereas the Camaro happens to be the only car in this comparison that has a manual transmission option. You can still get it in a six speed manual or in a 10 speed automatic. The other two though do not have a dual clutch option. So really all three cars have their own special thing when it comes to the transmission. You've got either the only manual option in the Camaro 
or you only have the dual clutch in the GT500, or you only have the automatic in the Hellcat Red Eye. So that is, again, I think an advantage to the GT500, unless you are a purist that has to have a manual transmission, and then really the Camaro is your only choice. So let's also get down to what you guys really came to talk about in this video, and that is the zero to 60 time and the quarter mile time. I guess the reason why the zero to 60 time matters is really just to sell cars. They can put them in magazines, they can put it on flyers. That is definitely the most contested specification of all of these between these cars. We're talking fractions of seconds between the two. The ZL1 is supposed to do the zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. The Hellcat Red Eye, 3.4 seconds. We're not sure exactly what the GT500 is going to be able to do. Given all of its specs, I think it also comes in around 3.4, maybe into 3.3 seconds, which would make it the quickest of those three. Now, what is maybe more important to the actual buyers of these cars is that quarter mile time. The quarter mile time of the ZL1 is 11.5 seconds. The quarter mile of the Hellcat Red Eye is 10.8 seconds. It right now is by far the only car at its price range and in its class that can do a 10 second quarter mile. But the real question is whether or not the GT500 will join it in that 10 second club. We're not sure yet. Again, Ford had, doesn't have test numbers that it released today. However, given all of the specifics that we know about the car now, and we know the power, we know the torque, and we know more about what the car has in it, I think it will come in at around 10.9 to 11 seconds. I think they are going to squeak out everything they can to get a 10.9 test number out of the new GT500. So ultimately, if I had to pick one of the three, I would actually pick the GT500. That's that's all things being equal, price being equal, everything about it. I think it's actually the best looking of the three cars. Of course, I love Fords in general. We have a lot of Ford cars. I also do like Chevy. I have a Corvette, so I'm not just a Ford guy. Uh, however, I think if I had to compare all three, I think the GT500 is definitely the best. In fact, if I had to just pick the GT350R versus the ZL1 or the Hellcat Red Eye, I'd probably pick the GT350. 350R uh, just because some of the things that I love about that car despite it not being as powerful as how the, does it compare against the Ford GT the Ford GT clearly will cost more money many many times more than the GT 500 but it actually has more power with the V8 and the supercharger it's going to have more horsepower than the GT does with its V6 and the twin turbos now these are completely different cars. The GT weighs a lot less. It's a more purpose-built race car that happens to be able to be driven on the street, whereas the Mustang is definitely a street car that you could turn into a race car. Um, so there will be some pros and cons between the two cars. It's hard to compare apples to apples. I'm very excited that they share the same transmission, uh, but they're going to be very separate purpose-built vehicles. If we're Talking about just the straight line performance at the drag strip, honestly, the GT500 will probably end up being faster. I'm not surprised by that, and I think that's completely okay. I think if you took it out on a long road track course, the GT would clean up against the GT500. So they're very different cars and built for different purposes. What's going on with the C8 Corvette? So on July 18th, which is almost exactly one month from today, if you're watching this in the future then you I'm probably saying things you already know so ignore that but so in about one month we will find out more about the specs of the C8 now why does that matter in this conversation they're different cars you already talked about the Camaro why does the C8 Corvette matter in this conversation here's why uh, G the GT500 has sort of set the bar now at 760 horsepower the Corvette base engine will not be 760 horsepower. Don't worry about that. It is very, very likely to be just a 6.2 liter normally aspirated V8. However, that's just the base model. We know now from the C7 that even just the Z06 model, they're going to put some forced induction onto this car. And if the base model has close to about 475 to 500 horsepower, you can imagine slapping a supercharger or a twin turbo onto a V8 
for the Z06 model of the new Corvette, it will be right up there where we expect it to be in these horsepower numbers, given where the current Z06, the C7 Z06 is in horsepower numbers. What I'm actually the most interested in is seeing what they do with the top of the line Corvette. I don't know if they're going to call it a ZR1 or a Zora or something else. They are definitely using the Zora name and image more on this model than any of the previous ones. Uh, so they might actually use the Zora name somewhere in the scheme of the new Corvette. But here's what so the top of the line Corvette, whether it's called a ZR1 or a Zora or anything else, I can almost guarantee you will have more than 760 horsepower. This number released by Ford today is more or less setting that benchmark for what Chevrolet has to do better than. Imagine if they come out with a mid-engine V8 dual clutch transmission, forced induction, 150 to 175 thousand dollar Corvette, and it still has less horsepower than the GT500. I think this is setting a benchmark for Chevy to up the game, and to me, no doubt they will. Uh, this is also setting the benchmark for the next generation of Camaro uh, and where they will go with the next top of the line Camaro. Where it is. So I'm super interested in seeing what happens next. It's a very exciting time in the automotive world, very exciting time uh, to see these supercar wars, to see these horsepower wars going off into the seven and 800 horsepower numbers uh, that I don't think we ever would have seen 20 years ago. So hopefully later this year, I'll get a chance to actually drive one of these things. I would love to drive a GT500 and a G and the GT back to back. I think that would be an amazing review to show you guys. I'd also like to see what the GT500 compares against the new C8 Corvette and then of course again the GT. I think those three being three very different but also similar cars would make a very interesting comparison. Comment below if you agree uh, and I will try to make it happen one way or another either later this year or early next year whenever all these cars hit the road. So that's our keyboard racing for the day. Uh, to me, the GT500 wins. I think it'll win in the zero to 60 category. I think it'll be close to winning in the quarter mile category, but I believe that the Hellcat Red Eye wins the quarter mile just by a fraction of a second. Uh, although some performance upgrades between the two, I think would push that GT500 above when it comes to the quarter mile. So ultimately, if I had to pick one of the three, I'm picking the GT500 pretty much every day of the week. I think it looks better. I think it's a cooler car. I think it's probably going to sound better. That engine is just amazing that it has. And I think that it's just going to hold its value better. And it's just going to be a better car all around. Uh, I am a Ford guy, but I'm also a Chevy guy. I don't hate Camaros. I don't hate Dodges. Please give me a comment below on which one you would pick. Also, hit like hit subscribe, share this video with whoever you'd like. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully later this year, again, we'll get some real cars out and we'll get some real racing, not just this internet keyboard racing, which is also fun to do, uh, but it's way more fun to actually get the car out on the road and see what it can do. Anyway, I'll see you next time. And thanks for joining us here on Supercar Ranch.